now to remember where it is I need to go. Karan, okay, I need to go to the artificial satellite. Karan. Now, I have relaunched my Patreon. I honestly don't expect anybody to become a member for quite some time. I am honestly doing it to try and boost my YouTube subscribers and see if I can get it so I can start earning ad revenue. YouTube really screwed us small guys over when they raise the standards on what you need to do to start earning ad revenue. Not sad, even if the standards were not raised, I'd be earning much money on it, but even pocket change is nice. Yeah, I suck. We were going somewhere else other than the uh, satellite. I just didn't remember how we got there. Now I do. So joy. If anyone is interested in regards to my Terra Enigma playlist, the next video I upload on Terra Enigma is going to be a success. I'm not going to be constantly doing fail after fail after fail, especially considering I'm so close to the end. However, to further improve my chances of uh, the video being a success. You guessed it, I'm level grinding. Now whether I level grind to max is up for debate, but I am most definitely level grinding. What a surprise, right? Yeah, what a surprise, it's me. I mean, if I were playing most RPGs on my own, I always send a level grind to max level anyways, because I can and I want to. I feel I get a lot more of my money's worth just in regards to time playing the game. When I level grind, and I honestly just legitimately do enjoy it. If for no other reason, then you do all have to understand the first JRPG I played to completion honestly was Final Fantasy VIII. Which, even though it's got its major flaws, I do enjoy. So maybe that sort of set me up to become so grind heavy when I play future RPGs after I defeated A or completed A. Even though in A it doesn't necessarily require you to grind for experience. I feel a burp coming on one moment. Well that was pathetic. But anyways, even though it's not ideal to level grind experience because enemies grind or level up with you, just due to the way that you get magic, you have to grind that way, so there you go. Will I be max grinding everyone in this game? Before I do the final boss, I may do it for the final party members. 
It depends on how I feel when I reach the end game. In all honesty, when I completed the game on my own, I did not level grind my final party to max level. So I honestly doubt I will do it for this playthrough, but I might just because I cannot stress enough I can and I want to. A crash landing cool. Yeah, crash landings are fun. Really fun. Well, I love how they make Chaz look so panicky, like he's the main character ever since Alice died, he's been sort of the unaccepted leader of the party. And he's still basically just a kid. I don't know how old he is. He's a... Uh, he might be a... Very old teenager, as in 19, not even in his 20s yet. He might honestly only be 12 to 14. It's... Hard to tell. Especially for me, considering I've always been such a tall, look older than I did freak of nature, especially in my youth. I was able to buy alcohol and tobacco when I was 10. No, I sort of hadn't to set myself up for it, dress in a nice clothing and what have you, but I cult. So yeah. And we're on the ice planet now. Since we're having yet another cutscene, I swear the last this and the last other two videos were basically primarily cutscenes. I don't know how long this video will be, but we might at least explore around, see if there's any shops we can buy some better armor and uh, weapons at. Even though there will be dungeons, we can get the same exact armor and possibly even better armor. I always buy the best, if for no other reason, then I can grind for money, too. Yes, I'm that much of a grind slot. Desolician. I don't know what these things are supposed to be. I mean, they've got green skin and they're humanoid. And that's a have arms, two legs, and walk up, right? But due to the green skin, it's um, very easy to assume that there's some sort of reptilian humanoid. And yes, they live on a frozen planet, so... How will that work? Yeah, we crush landed on an important devil. This guy is, uh... He's entertaining. For all the wrong reasons. He's very annoying, but... In something like fiction, you kind of like him, but if you knew a person like them in real life, you'd hate that person. The sort of person you love to hate and hate to love. So yeah. A girl with horns, a mechanical doll. 
So he's a mechanical doll and not a cyborg or what have you, okay. And their ears, not horns. Android. Well, I guess Data looked human and he was an android, so I guess it's not that much of a stress now that I think about it. Data from a Star Trek The Next Generation. Which I thoroughly enjoyed watching when I was a kid. When I went back to watch it from like, when I had Netflix to go back and watch it from season 1 and onwards. I was not a fan. That's what I, I mean. I wouldn't call myself a Star Trek fan overall, but I do appreciate the show at the very least. Except for the original, I can't stand Shatner at all. I mean, I'll watch the original Star Trek and I guess... I feel stupid watching it. Same with the um, original Star Trek movies, I mean... The ones that are considered the good ones are, I guess, tolerable. Well, I just can't stress enough how much I don't like Shatner's acting. Well, let's be honest, Shatner's lack of acting. Unlovely, we just completely destroyed the ship we were on. To the point where we're stuck here. Temporarily, anyways. But if it's struck beyond repair, we're obviously not going to repair it. I always like how anyone will say wreck beyond repair. Like. Is that really true? I'm not a car person at all, but. Let's say there's a very old vehicle that is considered wrecked beyond repair. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrecked beyond rebuild. Maybe it just takes a frame and rebuild basically a brand new vehicle from scratch using whatever you can salvage from the wrecked beyond repair vehicle but wrecked beyond repair is somewhat misleading if you think about it you know so you, you never know and shit like that also, one person's junk is another man's treasure, or another person's treasure. And we have another ship that we have to go to, apparently. Surprise, surprise. Kind of makes one wonder, if they have a ship that can do interstellar travel, even if it's only interstellar travel through the solar system, Why aren't they using it? Kinda sets it up for uh, this isn't gonna be a simple cast. Not surprising, it's a JRPG, of course it's not gonna be a simple cast. Oh, we gotta take the old fart along, lovely. How long have I been recording? It'll probably be over 15 minutes when I end this. Well, maybe you heard that for it, but it did feel better than the other one. So, yeah. Drags the old man around with us. Yeah, like, if, if he is coming willingly, we're not necessarily dragging him. But he may very well be a dead weight anchor. 
But if he's coming willingly, dragging, dragging someone means that they don't want to come, you're forcing them to come with you. Having them willingly come along and you still feel like you're dragging them, that's more dead weight. Like, it'd be better if you get rid of them or throw the whatever is slowing you down overboard. But if they're coming, if they're coming along willingly, the drag's not exactly the right word. Anyway, that's me being uh, way too specific in regards to the English language. The English language is a fucked up language anyways. Maybe it's the uh, writer and the author in me that always tends to, even though I don't point it out out loud, think about it in my brain. Who knows? On a side from me, who cares? Oh yeah, the Promanians. Promanians, I think, are humans. I don't know why they call them Parmanians instead of humans, but I guess as a, I guess as a planet is called Parma. Which is a very odd name that sounds like Parmesan. Like, do they make Parmesan cheese there? I feel like I'm setting myself up, a few people up for a literal cheesy joke, but I'm trying not to because it'd be, it'd be terrible even by my standards. And I mean extremely terrible even by my standards. And my jokes are just bad to begin with. Jokes like, what do you call a priest walking around lost in the woods, a Roman Catholic? Boo! Boo! Did you hear about a man who cloned the diamond? He was under a lot of pressure for a carbon copy. Boo! Boo! I'm not gonna tell anymore because then we'd be getting into offensive territory and... I like to still keep doing YouTube videos and not be banned. Yeah, anyway, as you may be very well aware, anyways, if you don't know about my book, I wrote the Blasphemous Bible. It's a satirical rewrite of the King James Version Bible. I'm currently working on the Book of Mormon and the Quran. I, I intend to offend it. Everyone! But I am an equal opportunity offender. I will even offend myself. How long have I been recording? After I talk to this guy, even though there's probably a town I can buy shit nearby. It's been not quite 20 minutes right now. And even if it does go over 20 minutes, I've got shit in the beginning to edit out. So I'm going to end it here. Take care, everybody, and bye.